Good morning, good morning, magandang umaga, maayong buntag from where I am here in Cebu. Welcome and thank you everyone for coming to our webinar this morning. You are with Check.ph Fact Checking um, Workshop on Historical Distortion. Uh, my name is Annie Perez Gallardo. I am from the University of the Philippines, Cebu, one of the partners of check.ph and I'm also from the UP journalism department as an MA student taking 298 and me and my classmates are on board this special project called check.ph. Actually, this is our fourth workshop since the relaunch of check.ph. If you were with us for since the first webinar, we want to thank you for being with us and being our partners. The first one, just a recap, was a digital verification workshop with Google News Initiative. We did a political fact-checking workshop also with Verifiles. And the recent one last Monday was an ethical fact-checking workshop with the assessors of the International Fact-Checking Network and Verifiles. And if you are new to this um, webinar check ph that ph is a collaborative effort of uh, partners and um, the academe and other civic organizations across the country in the fight against this information as we lead up to the polls and where do we find all the partners efforts in fact checking apart from the website we are also on different platforms we are on facebook and instagram with the handle check that ph we also have a Viber community, that's CheckPH. We are also on Twitter and recently on TikTok plus YouTube. Just search the handle check.ph and all of these platforms are verified. Yes, check na check. Today, our webinar is in partnership with Academia at Bayan Contaris Disinformacion at Bayan Abacada. And just a few reminders before, um, uh, just a few reminders before we start. Um, Oh, uh, hold on. Okay. Uh, we ask our participants, participants, ask our participants to mute their mic when they are not speaking, and our panelists will entertain questions after the whole session. In fact, we encourage you to ask questions. You may either key in your questions in the chat box, and I will read it for you, or you may opt to use the raise hand feature, or and I will call you. And you may duly unmute your microphone, open your cam to ask your questions. We encourage a healthy discussion this morning. And a certificate will also be issued at the end of the webinar. All right. 
So in recent years, historical distortion is an evident phenomena in a multitude of online content posted and shared in various social media platforms. Hence, this webinar aims to address the problems of historical distortion by allowing participants to identify online content that is historically inaccurate and learn the tools in fact-checking by using sources accessible online. So that should be very interesting this morning. But first, let me introduce our esteemed speakers. First, he is an assistant professor at the University of the Philippines Department of History. He obtained his BA History degree, cum laude, cum laude and MA History degree from UP Diliman. Um, currently, he is taking his PhD in History in the same university, where his, his research interests focus on Marxism and historical scholarship, the history of activist and student movement in the Philippines, and uh, nationalism in the Philippines. He is a member of Tangol Kasaysayan and the convener of the Abacada Network. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm virtual applause, please, to Professor Francisco Jaime Paolo Dia. Hi, good morning to everyone. Um, good morning to Ma'am Chua and Ma'am Labiste. Sila po yung con constantly nakausap ko. Good morning to all of the participants in this Zoom uh, meeting room. And those who are watching via um, YouTube, I believe we are live streaming on YouTube and um, we've uh, reposted this YouTube link in our respective pages. So um, the topic for, for this morning is very specific. It's on uh, fact-checking historical distortion. So let me just uh, share my screen. Okay. So um, I got this editorial from, from Philippine Star. Ay, ayan yung pirma ng artist sa taas. So um, identifying historical distortions, uh, what are the nature and the traits of online disinformation? We'd like to believe that um, because of the power of social media and the rise of, of um, uh, dependency on, on social media platforms, especially in light of the pandemic, um, historical disin distortion is, is, uh, plays a huge part or, or component of online disinformation. There are many forms of online disinformation, many variants, and one of them is um, providing alternative histories, quote-unquote. No, uh, and we've seen this rise ever since, what, 2016, I think, no? Um, uh, there are already online content um, on YouTube, most specifically, uh, that, that has um, uh, content on online, uh, on, on historical disinformation, historical distortion. But I think um, in, in the historical community, at least, we noticed the rise of historical distortions reposted, posted, and posted um, on various social media platforms. This surge happened in 2016, the national elections, and, and in the run-up to the 2020 elections, nangyayari na naman siya. It's already happening. So this is a very timely, ano, timely um, webinar. It's not like, I, I think I, I attended one of check.ph um, uh, workshop on, on verification, which is very helpful because it's, it's interactive. It has activities. But um, I, I think this is not a workshop. This is a webinar, just a, a disclaimer. So I'm going to run through the technical concepts of, of historical distortions. So before we... we um, um, before we, before I talk about how to identify or or how to look out for what are the telltale signs of historical distortions online, I'd like to give context to the concept of historical distortion, um, and this roots back to the larger concept of historical revisionism. Uh? Uh, I think nakita natin itong mga ano eh, um, ever since nung nilibing si um, Ferdinand Marcos sa libingan ng mga bayani, uh, there are already placards na no to historical disto ah, no to historical revisionism. May mga ganyan eh. No? Um, so it has a, a pejorative nature, the term itself. But 
Um, I want to explain through this slide that historical revisionism is not really bad per se when, when you talk about the concept itself. Um, it simply involves a reinterpretation of a certain historical event, a narrative. Um, and you inter reinterpret and rewrite his history based on the presentation of, of new facts because there are new what primary sources unearthed by archaeologists, for example. And you subject these primary sources to utter scrutiny, um, subject them into a scientific examination to ascertain if primary sources, new primary sources that carry new historical information is accurate and factual. And before it, it appears on revised history books, the historical community, for example, and other um, colleagues from other fields have to determine the factuality of a new source of information about our past. So what I'm trying to say is um, historical revisionism, before it gets done, it has a tedious process involved, a step-by-step -step process following um, academic standards, scientific method, you have a scientific methodology applied to it uh, before you can revise or rewrite or reinterpret an existing historical narrative that is familiar to everyone being taught in schools. You know? So usually uh, a revised form of history challenges our orthodox views of the past. So kung ano yung alam natin, for example, na historical narrative um, na tinuturo pa ulit-ulit sa school um, with the revised historic history book um, tends to be ano, it, it, it tends to challenge the, the old um, old uh, uh, the old narrative on history so I'm quoting here James McPherson a historian who wrote this article in in uh, entitled revisionist Histor historians uh, um, according to him that revision is the lifeblood of um, history uh, uh, in 2003, uh, of historical scholarship. History is a continuing dialogue uh, between the past and the present, the present and the past. An ending quest of historians for understanding the past, that is revisionism, is what makes history vital and meaningful. So the point of, of that quote is to show that um, history is very dynamic. It's, it's an open-ended book. Hindi natin sinasabi na Kapag meron ka ng, let's say, what's a popular history book? Yung kay Teodoro Agoncillo, History of the Filipino People, yung laging sinasay. Hindi dahil meron ka na nung narrative na yun, that's the final, ano, that's the final narrative from time immemorial. No? Going to the future, that's the final narrative. No, history is an open-ended book. There are, we, historians admit that there are primary sources that are yet to be discovered hindi pa natin na-discover sa ngayon. And these primary sources, if proven to be factual, if proven to be accurate, then historians have this duty to update readers, the readers, um, update historical narratives so that the, the newly updated historical narratives will be taught in schools. It is the duty of the history writer, the historians, and their colleagues who work with them um, to constantly update the public about new information about our past. Kasi kung hindi mangyayari yung pagre-revise ng history, the, the younger generations will be taught a historical narrative that is outdated, for example. No? So historical revisionism, the concept itself, it's being done in, in, in history. Constantly revise histories. That's why when you when, when we enter uh, books bookstores, for example, we see, for example, History of the Filipino People, yan laging binibenta sa National Bookstore. It's, I think the current version is it's on its eighth edition. So it had eight revisions na. No? And, and marami yan eh. Uh, not only Philippine history, world history texts, textbooks. Daming revisions because there is a need to update um, historical narratives. But that updating is grounded on scientific methodology. It has scientific basis. No? Okay, and this is what I've been saying earlier. No? Na, um, according to this Italian historian, Giovanni Catini, who wrote um, 
in, in uh, who wrote an article entitled Historical Revisionism, Reinterpretation of History in Contemporary Political Debate in 2011. No? Um, he applies this analysis or, or he, he, he studies the concept of revisionism um, in, in the present day context uh, in light of political events. No? Sabi niya, in common parlance, the word revisionism has a pejorative meaning because it is associated with the vulgar use of certain historical events manipulated for political ends with a complete lack of scientific uh, foundation. That's why I, I've talked, I managed to talk to several individuals when, when, I, gave, when I do the uh, webinars on, on historical revisionism as a concept. Um, sabi nila parang bakit hindi na lang distortion yung gamitin and and it's understandable pwede nga naman talagang gamitin yung historical distortion no kasi pag revisionism parang ano eh parang sa sinasabi natin it's very general it's a very general term and it's a common practice among historians pero yun nga in light of recent events in light of what we see on social media the alternative histories for example that's constantly being shared and reposted talagang na itali na yung term ng historical revisionism doon sa negative aspects ng historical practice which is sabi ni Katini dito you manipulate the interpretation of facts for political ends therefore it 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 complete it, it has it lacks scientific grounding scientific foundation which is very essential when historians and history writers revise historical narratives so this brings into light the concepts of positive historical revisionism and negative historical revisionism. These are two different things um, when you're going to be particular about the concept of historical revisionism. Uh, Dr. Jokno, the former NHCP, the National Historical Chairperson, um, former National Historical Comm Commission Chairperson, um, discussed this last year uh, in, in September. The, the distinction between positive and negative revision. So I, I think it's still available online. Um, you can watch that online. But um, according to her explanation, to her presentation, no, when you say positive revisionism, you follow the rigors of academic standard in writing or rewriting history, historical narratives. You follow a scientific method, follow the scientific methodology. Negative historical revisionism is the complete opposite of that, what Catini was saying earlier, the, the Italian historian. You know? it, has, it lacks uh, scientific grounding. Um, you twist facts, data, and infer, or overinterpret facts because you have ulterior motives, usually political motives. That's why um, this historian, Czech historian, E.V. Zer Tucker, who wrote this uh, article, Historiographic Revision and Revisionism in 2008, according to him, explains that revisionist historiography or negative revisionism relies on therapeutic values. And being therapeutic values, instead of standard consensus, consensus generating cognitive scientific values um, that historians of diverse backgrounds agree on. So when you're going to analyze alternative histories, for example, or historical distortions that you see online, you usually notice certain um, traits or aspects or characteristics of these narratives. And yun yung, ano, yun yung sinasabi ni Tucker na therapeutic values because usually, according to Tucker, these uh, negative historical narratives or, or these narratives that underwent negative historical revisionism weave in them therapeutic values. So what are these? These are the certain therapeutic values that he gives out. Denial of historical guilt, promotion of self-respect, elimination of a sense of alienation and absurdity. So the point of Tucker is that when you're going to study historical um, revisionism online, and you, I, you, you try to piece it out, uh, mo siya, you will notice that usually these narratives, these counter-narratives, usually... Um, Ang purpose niya is to deny historical guilt, yan. promote self-respect na, for example, and, and this can be applied in the Philippines, eh. for example, um, bakit nandiyan yung myth ng Taliano Gold? 
because we're trying to deny Marcos of the historical guilt that their clan during their regime in, 19, in the 1970s to the late 1980s plundered public coffers. So denying historical guilt, that's a it's called therapeutic value because it placates something. No? Parang may, ther may, may therapy, tin uh, ina ano niya, it's therapeutic for, for the one who committed um, uh, what? He knew crimes in the past, no? Promote self-respect because their family's legacy, political legacy, is so tarnished by graft and corruption and massive human rights violations. So, the um, purpose of the myths and, and, and historical distortions is to bring back that sort of self-respect they were enjoying when they were um, at the heyday of their political careers, no? And of course, is related to promotion of self-respect is to remove that alienation no, na parang they are always, parang, di ba ang feeling nila, inaapi sila, ganun, lagi silang inaano, ina-attack sa social media. Well, there's nothing bad with that because people are saying, telling the truth, hindi ba? Pero kaya nag-emerge yung mga conspiracy theories that, that is connected to the Marcoses is because for this purpose, they want to promote self-respect and they want to remove that sense of alienation that, that they're currently feeling. You know? And this, this is not exclusive to the Philippines. This already happened sometime in the past. In Europe, for example, in 1977, this writer, David Irving, published a book, Hitler's War, um, that we're going to read the book. Talagang ano siya, Holocaust, it's a Holocaust denial. No? Um, it denies the existence of the Holocaust. And ang sinasabi ni Irving dito sa libro na to is that Hitler wasn't aware of the genocide and the Holocaust. Ang, may aware, lang, ang aware lang daw doon is yung mga general ni Hitler, Heinrich Himmler daw, and his subordinates. Sila daw yung may pakana doon. And this, this, is, this has similarities with what we've been hearing in, in the Philippine context. No? Narinig na natin sa social media, for example, yung counter-narratives na, ah, Marcos was the best president because he was destroyed by his subordinates. Hindi ba? It's very familiar. We've read that in several posts na it was only his cronies who, who um, yung may pakana ng grafted corruption or his military personnel na may pakana ng massive human rights violation. And it's the same pattern that we already saw with this case, with David, Ir David Irving's book. David Irving was discredited as a history writer in Europe. He was even, may kaso pa na, na well, well, he filed a case of libel against Penguin Books who produced a, a, a publication that disputed and labeled Irving as a Holocaust denier. You can get in prison, eh, pag nag-deny nag ka ng Holocaust. Eh. Um, pag ano kay pro-Nazi in Europe, no? Natalo yung kaso na yon and then he was discredited by by the public especially the academic community. So moving forward um, with respect to the essential to the essence of historical revisionism no uh, what is the nature talaga of historical revisionism as what we've discussed um, it's polemical it's rhetorical naririnig natin best president ever hindi ba ganun no, um, may, may meron pa nga best president in the entire universe. <laughs> may ganun pa. I think that was referring to Duterte. I'm not sure. No, based on questionable, questionable or contentious facts, is based on negating or manipulating facts, and it directed towards whitewashing and myth making. So it's not scientific. Negative revisionism. It's not scientific, and it's based on dubious facts or dubious interpretation of facts. And there you arrive with the concept of distortion. The practice of negative historical revisionism produces historical distortions. And historical distortions, ang characteristics niyan is producers of historical distortions usually overinterpret facts. They twist facts for political ends or negate facts. Yung negation, nakikita natin yan doon sa mga, sa mga narrat counter-narratives online na sinasabi na, ah, wala naman masyadong na, na, ano, naapektuhan ng martial law. So they're discrediting the facts of massive human rights violations, for example. No? Um, and this is a clear manifestation of historical distortion. Okay, 
Now, how do we detect historical distortions online? Now, um, do doon sa Abacada, for example, yung Akademiya at Bayan kontra disinformasyon at dayaan. So we have a fact-checking team there. And um, usually, ito yung mga observations namin doon sa mga fina fact check namin na, na online content that contain um, narratives that are classified as historical distortions. Usually, usually viral. Viral online content. Daming comments, daming shares, so many likes and shares. Um, and they have absurd claims doon sa title. Iyan ang isang observable na, na bagay doon. The real hidden truth of Philippine history that was not taught in school. No? The secret history of the Philippines. Usually may mga ganyan eh. No? The untold story of the Philippines. And the purpose of this is, I think, clickbait. No? <clears throat> It's for clickbait, for to get the attention of, of, of people na parang, ah, ito, hindi pala tinuro nung high school to. Ano kaya ito? So, you will read that and then the algorithm in social media will feed you the similar narratives that 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 is along those lines. no um, What else? You have, in order to detect historical distortion, you have to look at the credibility of the source. Uh, who uploaded the content? Credible ba yung nag-upload ng content? Or minsan kasi, um, there are individuals that have, um, may, meron silang reputation in public. Not really influencers, kasi may mga influencers talaga na, ano, social media influencers na we know um, are peddlers of fake news. But there are minsan celebrities who, became, who, who become... Um, vehicles of historical distortion, enablers of historical distortion because they give their platform to, to active participants of distorting history. So what you're going to look at is not only the credibility of the source, pwedeng credible yung source, pero nagkataon yung in-interview niya or yung keynote niya spews historical distortion. So who was featured in that online content? No? Um, who was quoted or who was cited. So you, you have to watch out for that. No? And when you're dealing with online content, video or, or text, for example, you also have to, to be patient enough because sometimes we stop reading what is very absurd, but to, to read it through and locate, if you're going to fact check it, to locate what is absurd about that content. No? So usually the content is unbelievable, it's absurd, it has spectacular claims based on unfounded, questionable claims, sweeping generalizations and negates established facts. So let's look at examples, several examples. No? So this, um, this is one example of, of uh, historical distortion. No? Um, the title itself, The Untold Story of the Kingdom of the Maharlikans. So kami, nagagaling pa lang sa standpoint ng, ng mga history writers. Eh, parang, ano yung Kingdom of Maharlikans? We, we haven't heard of that in any primary source. No? And the source is from the political party that Marcos Sr. established, Ferdinand E. Marcos established in 1978. KBL, Kilusang Bagong Lipunan, no? Eh, may mga following yan. No? Now, when you're going to look at the narrative, so you look at the title, you look at who produced the content, and dito hindi kasi madedetect kung viral ba siya or what unless shinere siya online. But it, this is in on their website. And you read through the content, dito pa lang makikita nyo na, na um, it's, very, it's very believable for the ordinary netizen. Because they use dates, proper nouns, um, and, diba, names, familiar names, and then data pa nga to, uh, to, ano, to, to tie up a story that would satisfy a certain political end. For example, in, in this part of that, that's a long post, that's a long article in, in that website. Ito yung makikita natin yung sa sinasabi ni ABA Tucker na therapeutic um, values, therapeutic uh, historiography. That when you're going to read this portion pa lang na in 1949, ang pinakamayaman na tao sa Pilipinas si Father Jose Antonio Diaz and uh, Ferdinand Marcos. No? May address pa nga eh, nakalagay dyan, yung gold daw nasa 
nandito sa East Avenue, malapit lang dito sa UP. Um, nasa basement. No? So, the purpose of this, the ultimate purpose of this is to establish the fact that Marcos was rich already prior to his presidency. And that denies the historical guilt of Uh, graft and corruption, that they committed graft and corruption. Kasi i-argue ng mga taong mga kabasa nito, eh mayaman naman pala si Marcos eh. Nakalagay dito, may data, may, may numbers, may, may, may names na binabanggit. No? So you have to be aware of that. I, I won't discuss on, on how or and what, what sources to use because that, that will be discussed by Sir Francis Gialogo in the second. Ano. So these are only examples, a run-through of, of several examples that we have. Um, What else? Ito naman. Not really about the Marcoses, but one of the early fake news and historical distortions that we, we've encountered, the hidden truths that the media is not telling us. Uh, diba? The title itself, clickbait. 500,000 plus views, 2011, which was uploaded by Pinoy Monkey Pride. Okay. So, medyo questionable who uploaded the content. So, kailangan yung i-click yung content, tingnan nyo yung ibang content uploads nila. Then, maybe watch one or two videos to, to, to get a sense kung is, is this person or group credible ba? Pangalan pa lang Pinoy Monkey Pride eh, no? And then, um, the, the content, you read the content or you watch the content. It's a nine-minute video. It talks about how the Kowankos got their money. Ganun yan eh. How the Kowankos got their money and then um, how did they become rich? So they trace it way back to the Philippine Revolution na si, Jose, si Juan at Anto, si, si uh, Antonio Luna daw, the Luna family, doon nila nakuha yung money. No? If you're going to recall this story. No? And then ang ending nitong video na to, it tells us that the people power was staged as a coup d'etat by Cory Aquino against the Marcoses and that we lived a prosperous life during the time of the Marcoses before it got destroyed by the Dilawans. Yan ang nakabanggit dyan. Eh. Dyan sa video niya. So, clearly, made for political ends, political purposes. There is no historical um, source that could tell us the connection of the Luna wealth of the Tagalog region, mga Tagalog yung mga Luna eh. the Lunas, um, and then the Kuwankos. No, no, I, I am not familiar with any uh, primary source that could prove that. No? Or for example, ito naman, real talk about Marcos, ang nag-upload Mr. Rio, 600,000 plus views, ang dami. Real talk daw. So the claim is very, it's, it's eye-catching. It's, It gets your attention. Ano kaya yung real talk na yan? Diba? Sino ang mga pro at anti-Marcos ng panahon ng martial law? Um, so, quite questionable uploader. No? Mr. Rio Channel, who is that? Who talks about history? No? I'm not saying, this is not to denigrate others. No? Kasi students can talk about history. But you look at the content that Mr. Rio has been uploading. Hindi ba? And what were the sources that he consulted for these? No, these are dubious sources that the, the claims that he, he published in this video are all sweeping generalizations that is not based on actual facts. And these are all political claims against what? The Dilawans, no, binabanggit niya dito. Um, sinasabi niya dito na mga uh, rebelde naman daw talaga yung mga napatay noong martial law. Tama lang yung ginawa ni Ferdinand Marcos to declare martial law, to quell the communist insurgency and whatnot. No? Um, he mentions numbers. I don't know if he or she, yung nag, ano, well, Mr. Rio, um, mentions numbers on, on the looming communist threat, but there are actual documents to disprove that na mas dumami pa yung... Um, underground movement ng panahon ni Marcos because of the dictatorship. So, meron na kaagad disconnect and meron na kaagad... The, the important thing here is you watch through the content and corroborate. You have to corroborate. No? Or this, for example. History of the Maharlika revealed. Revealed. No? 2012, more than 700,000 views produced by the people of Maharlika. Um... These are, please understand that these are video contents and online materials that are posted independently from one another. 
pinost sila sa iba't ibang dates, pinost ng iba't ibang mga uploaders. But when you're going to look at the online content, everything in retrospect, they all tie up to a single story. For example, this one-hour interview of the so-called Prince Julian Taliano, um, kiniklaim niya na legitimate yung kingdom of Maharlika that is connected to the KBL article earlier or story earlier. no? And um, legit sila na mayaman sila in the past, they ruled over the Philippines and they are a royal family. That's their claim. That's their general claim to cut the long story short. And this establishes a, a, a sense of credibility, this interview, a sense of credibility, so to speak, for the Talianos, for people to believe that there exists nga mga Taliano, baka nga ganun. At confirm ng mga tao kung nabasa nila yung KBL website, totoo nga siguro yung sinasabi na story doon, na binigyan ng tons of gold si Jose Antonio Diaz at si Ferdinand Marcos nung nagsisimula pa lang siyang abogado, si Marcos. No? So establishing the credibility of certain individuals that are featured in other narratives that are characterized as historical distortions. They all tie up together. And they also have a Facebook group. 6.6 thousand members, people of Maharlika. So that's very, um, what's the proper term to use? Alarming ba? No? Or in this example, ang lihim na natuklasan. Marcos and Riza, untold stories in history. Clickbait. 491,000 views. Published only last year. And it's a short video. Uh, 11 minutes. Uploaded by Tuklas Nicolas. That's Tuklas Nicolas production. So, as quite, quite, ano, quite questionable uploader. Hindi, <laughs> hindi, quite questionable uploader for me. Um, it's questionable uploader, uh, video content provider. And then when you course through the videos, and, and this, I, I return to my earlier point that the stories tie up, the, the fake news, the distortions tie up together. Na si Father Jose Antonio Diaz na binabanggit doon sa KBL website, siya daw talaga, si, it gets absurd. It's, it gets absurd. Siya daw si Rizal. Hindi daw namatay si Rizal dahil yung mga monarchs daw sa Europe gustong i-preserve si Rizal because he was a very heroic individual. So he wasn't really, he didn't really get injured when he was, he was supposedly, supposedly executed in 1896. And then tumakas daw siya papuntang Europe, nagtago siya as Father Jose Antonio Diaz. And then nung nagtago siya as Father Jose Antonio Diaz, um, he became, sabi dyan sa video, the superior general of the Jesuit order during the wartime years. And then inentrust ng European monarchs yung wealth nila because of the war kay Jose Antonio Diaz as the superior general of the Jesuit order. And then after the war, he returned. Diaz or Rizal returned. And then nakilala niya si Marcos, magaling na abogado daw at that time in the post-war years, 1949, niya, binayaran niya ng gold. So returning to the original narrative that ay mayaman naman pala talaga si Marcos. Bakit? Kasi binayaran naman. Ibang version naman. Binayaran ni Jose Antonio Diaz si Marcos ng gold. It's an absurd <laughs> Story. It's a made-up story. Absurd. But when you read the comment section, and daming naniniwala. May isa pa akong nabasang comment na, na conf- apparently this video confirmed the story of his grandfather or her grandfather. I think her atay. Her grandfather. Na totoo pala yung sinabi ni Lolo na hindi daw talaga namatay si Rizal. It's a comment. I don't know if it's a bot or, or fake account. Pero mar- marami talagang naniniwala sa ganitong ano, mga disinformation, historical distortions. More examples by Filipino Future. He has a Facebook page. He also has a YouTube channel. 321K subscribers. Ang dami niyan. 157,000 views. Babawiin ang Marcos Sweat mula sa kamay ng global elite. So, one of Aviator Tucker's points, um, the emergence of conspiracy theories in order to, to placate or to, to remove um, the sense of alienation. Na itong mga Marcoses pala, ba, si, di ba, sina, sasabihin ng ordinary loyalist na ah, ina, ano sila, sinasabi na plunder daw sila. Hindi. Tinatago lang ni Marcos yung wealth. Ininvest niya. Pinahiram niya sa ibang bansa. Nakalagay dito. 
nag-invest siya sa ibang bansa para labanan ang elite, para pigilan ang one world government, ang one world currency. It's a conspiracy theory. Similar, I'm oh, sorry. It's a conspiracy theory. It's not supported by historical fact, but people believe in these narratives. And the ultimate purpose of this is it benefits a certain political clique, namely the Marcoses, for example. Kahit pa gano'ng ka-observed yan, there's this, ano eh, there's this belief na parang, ay, hindi naman talaga sila nagnakaw. Bakit? Kasi kinuha lang talaga din nila yung yaman para alagaan. May mga gano'ng, ano, may mga gano'ng kamayikita sa comment section. So it, it, it's, it's utter historical disinformation, ay, historical distortion, no? based on conspiracy theories that is not grounded on scientific facts. Or ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, na you look, take a look at scrutinize the, the upload, you know, the, the one who uploaded, minsan dubious, minsan naman, eh, the political personality, Bongbong Marcos himself, with 108k viewers. And then Enrile, a real, a, 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 a witness to history. Now, you, you question who was interviewed or featured. Dubious na kagad for me, Marcos and, and, and Enrile. Enrile flip-flops eh about yung narrative niya on, on, on the so-called yung, yung ambush, which was the final straw for the declaration of martial law. Nag-flip-flop siya ng kwento for many years. Di ba? Now, the question that, that should pop into fact-checkers is that, is he a credible source for history? May ganun siyang reputation eh. No? Or ito naman yung sinasabi ko Minsan meron tayong mga social media um, uh, Influencers na talagang alam natin Na peddlers of fake news Minsan naman celebrities who use their channel To enable historical distortion Unfortunately that happened to this channel Tony Gonzaga Studio 5.2 million subscribers Featured Marcos who kept on talking about historical distortions. Pinak-check na natin yan, yung mga statements ni Jaan sa Tony Talks episode na yan. No? The so-called attempt to humanize um, Ferdinand Marcos Sr. led to many claims uh, that can be categorized as distorting history, historical distortions by none other than Bongbong Marcos. No? So, just to wrap it up, medyo nag-overtime na ako sa aking uh, uh, part ng lecture. When you detect historical distortions, there has to be a critical examination of online content. Um, it may be parang nakakairita siya, simula. It, it may annoy you. It, you may find it very absurd that you will simply dismiss it. But when you go fact, when you, when you fact check historical, con, uh, when you fact check online content like YouTube videos or Facebook posts, you have to listen at the narrative that, that counter narrative so to speak and and piece it together no uh, 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 examine it no uh, and then identify what is a twisted historical fact what what fact is negated in that narrative no in order for us to identify the extent of of historical distortion that that is evident in one online content Marami pa yan. Ilang examples lang yung binigay ko dito. So, yeah. There has to be critical examination of, the, of these materials. Especially because it misleads people. Um, misleads people to... Ang dami naniniwala, for example, sa Taliano Gold. Hindi ba? So, there, there has to be fact, uh, solid fact-checking and solid examination of online content by fact-checkers. So, Thank you for listening to, to, to this lecture. Yeah. I hand it over to the moderator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maraming salamat po, Professor Giang, and for sharing to us no, how, it, how is it to spot and to be very critical when it comes to um, clickbaits, lalo na ngayon na paparating ng election. Maraming salamat po. Now let's go to our second speaker. He is the... A professor at the Department of History at the Ateneo de Manila University. He, um, he is a demographic and social historian and in 2008, a Fulbright visiting senior scholar at the Center for the Study of the History of Medicine and Asian Pacific 
Island American Studies program both at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, where he conducted research on the influenza pandemic of 1918 to 1919. He is the convenor of Tangol Kasaysayan and a member of the Abacada Network. Friends, let's virtually welcome Dr. Francis A. Guillalogo. A warm virtual applause, please, for Dr. Guillalogo. Maraming salamat, uh, uh... Prof. Uh, Perez Gallardo, and, and thank you uh, for uh, inviting me in, in this very worthy uh, endeavor. No? Uh, natutuwa ako at na, naging uh, pangalawa ako sa mag, magbibigay ng panayam dahil uh, yung mga binanggit ni Gio kanina ay... Uh, uh, napaka-komprehensibo at uh, malaman, uh, malawak at malalim na pagtalakay sa kasaysayan at historiografiya no, ng uh, uh, distorsyong uh, uh, paglalahad uh, sa nakaraan. At uh, dahil dito, yung ilang bagay na... Um, uh, binanggit niya at napalalim, papahapyawan ko na lamang ng, ng pagtalakay. Magbibigay uh, lamang ako ng slide para mas maging maayos yung ating pagtalakay. Ayan. Okay. Nakikita po ba? Uh, wait. Ayan. Um, binago ko ng konte at pinalawig yung aking titulo. Um, um, it's now entitled uh, Fact-Checking Historical Distortions, Historiography, Historical Research and Analysis of Historical Data. Um, medyo boring no? um, and very, very uh, perhaps academic to some uh, because I will be dealing with some of the um, basic intricacies of historical research and uh, arriving at uh, factual uh, interpretation of uh, of the past uh, particularly uh, this this the original lecture was uh, uh, developed parts of it at least uh, for for some of my graduate students tapos dinagdagan ko na lang uh, just to be able to contextualize the current challenges that we are facing uh, I have three uh, major portions uh, for this presentation. Uh, I will start with uh, differentiating history, historiography in the current digital age. Uh, and the second part, I will deal with the uh, notions of historical distortions, negative historical revisionism, and some aspects of historical consciousness in the, in the light of uh, historical research. No? And lastly, I will deal with uh, contemporary challenges and possible sources, alternative sources that uh, may help us in coming up with um, a, a more uh, scientifically and academically grounded historical interpretation. So for the par uh, first part, there is a great difference between history and historiography. Uh, and I will, I will deal with this particular difference uh, for this lecture. Uh, also, uh, iba-iba kasi yung pag pagtalakay natin, no? ano yung uh, uh, kaganapan at mga pangyayari at paano natin titignan ang mga ito uh, bilang pamamaraan ng pagsusuring pangkasaysayan. Um, facts and historical interpretations are two essential components of uh, the narrative without historical facts, um, the interpretation can simply be uh, regarded as uh, fictional narratives. But without historical interpretation, the, uh, the retelling of historical facts are, are simply chronicling you know, of events and not uh, actual history. And, and finally, ano yung um, uh, kabuluhan no, uh, historiography as a digital age ngayon. Uh, if history and historiography are two different fields, no, 
when we say history, it, it uh, deals with the systematic study of past human events. Um, but when we deal with historiography, we deal with how societies and uh, periods uh, of uh, human um, development study the past. No? So historiography is the study of the history of historical studies. No? Um, I, will, I will not be dwelling much on this, but uh, there are two major uh, aspects of historiography that should be considered. Historical uh, methodology, whether the study of the history of historical studies, uh, uh, we're applying, are applying um, appropriate, necessary, and scientific methodologies. And number two, the philosophy of history. What is the idea behind uh, the interpretation, uh, the school of thought, no? uh, sometimes the ideology uh, in the historical narrative? No? In a way, uh, all histories, sabi nga di Benedetto Croce, the Italian historian, all history uh, is contemporary history uh, because we are, in a way, dialoguing. Uh, as uh, members of, of the contemporary generation, dialoguing with, with the past, you know, as interpreted by the historian or the author on the one hand, and the viewer or the receiver of the historical interpretation on the, on the other. Uh, so in a way, um, history has always been partisan, you know, partisan in terms of how the current generation interprets uh, the past and finds meaning and relevance to that past or, or how the current generation reads the product of the historian who may have uh, written uh, his piece uh, as a representative interpretation of his or her generation, uh, which need not necessarily be our contemporary generation. And that interpretation of the historian uh, about uh, her subject or his subject is also a, a way of dialoguing uh, with, with this past. No? Uh, right now, there is a, um, an observable, uh, noticeable expansion in the field because of digital media. Uh, some, uh, a great number of archival and library historical sources uh, are already available. Uh, even within the confines of our of our um, households, no, lalo na ngayon, no, um, naka study from home and work from home tayong lahat. We we need not necessarily have to go to the archives or to the libraries to get the the uh, uh, sources essential and necessary for us to uh, present a narrative, no. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this digital media also lends itself some challenges. No? Uh, on the one hand, there is this challenge of how to uh, present academic and scientific interpretations to that past, given uh, the availability of uh, sources. At the same time, you know, the danger of um, and, and the, the challenges of popular simplification or distortion even. No? Uh, Sometimes, um, ang dami-dami nating sources, uh, hindi natin alam ano yung dapat na paniwalaan. No? Um, kasi simplify, no? kung minsan sabi nga ni Gio, hindi na logical yung ibang interpretations. No? And then, uh, we are also confronted with the, with the very nature of historical revisionism, uh, positive and negative. No? Hindi ko na uh, tatalakayin ito ng malaliman kasi natalakay na naman ito ni Gio kanina. No? But suffice it to say, it's essential for historians to always go back at uh, uh, previously established generalizations in the light of new findings, new sources, uh, new discoveries, uh, uh, um, newly available collections, for example, or accessible collections to the present and contemporary generation na hindi accessible to past historians. Kaya we need to revise uh, our history. But at the same time, we also need to uh, be in the lookout for those who are uh, uh, systematically and uh, launching an organized 
uh, campaign to distort the past, no? to distort history. So it's really positive and, and negative historical revisionism. Alimbawa, nung positive historical revisionism, like uh, yung prior interpretation of the generation of Henry Otley Bayer, that uh, there were migration waves, uh, start, uh, and that the Aboriginal Filipinos were the Negritos, and then we have Indonesian type A, type B, and then the Malays came in droves, in waves, not to populate the, the archipelago. Suffice it to say, latter-day archaeologists and historians like William Henry Scott and Felipe Landa Hocano revised that with new findings, saying that uh, uh, perhaps in, um, there should be a, a, a uh, uh, need to uh, revise our prehistoric past. And uh, given the new findings in archaeology, in new discoveries in in uh, anthropology and even new sources no, in uh, Philippine prehistory. So uh, debunk na yon at wala nang uh, uh, nagsasabi na legitimate pa rin yung migration waves. Although uh, in some textbooks uh, um, with our dismay, minsan nagpe-persist pa rin. So uh, yung uh, positive historical revisionism is always a constant process of asserting the scientific and academic nature of historical studies for revision. Sometimes naman, um, some of the generalizations were arrived at based on some political or uh, uh, ideological agenda. No? For example, yung idea of Makario Sakai as a bandit no, uh, as, a, uh, as a tulisan no? as a result of the uh, bandolerismo statute uh, or bandolerismo law uh, propounded by the Americans. Pero ngayon, sinasabi natin isang general na tunay si Macario Sakay at bayani siya ng himagsikan. O kaya historical, positive historical revisionism is also essential to address some of those uh, elements in history that were silenced uh, or totally erased or are being erased by uh, the powers that be. Yung classic example nito, yung uh, the narratives of the Filipino uh, uh, women victims of uh, Japanese military sexual slavery, uh, also known as comfort women. No? We, we need to assert their existence. We need to recognize them and uh, put them, put their narratives in the mainstream. Uh, uh, although may denialism on, on some parts, no, on the part of the Japanese uh, government and some of those uh, in cahoots with the government, uh, uh, even some, unfortunately, some Filipino uh, historians and leaders. Um, we are now confronted with uh, the explosion, as I said, of sources in history. No, uh, the digital uh, revolution, so to speak, had, have had tremendous impact in the study of history. Some were saying that positively, it democratized historical sources. Kasi, di ba, dati nga, kailangan ka pang magpunta sa mga archibo sa Espanya, sa Amerika, sa mga specialisadong uh, mga koleksyon, no? uh, para lamang makakuha ng maraming primary sources. Uh, not only uh, for Filipinos, but more especially for Filipinos who were not residing even in Manila, traveling to Manila and go to the, to the archives of, uh, of uh, the NCR, you know, in the many collections uh, in NCR, parang um, uh, inaccessible no? at uh, uh, yun lamang parang capable of traveling physically to these sites, archival and library sites can actually have access to the materials. Pero now with the digital revolution, a lot of uh, primary archival sources are readily accessible. No? Um, some um, are available even for free. No? Uh, at the same time, uh, sabi nila, it uh, puts forward the possibility of egalitarianism in historical practice. No? There was this... Um, uh, Siguro wrong appreciation of the historical of the historian's craft 
of the practice of uh, academic historiography na parang ah you need to uh, study several years magbabad ka sa archives uh, magpublish ng peer reviewed journal in peer peer reviewed journals or books uh, para lang masabi na ikaw ay historian sabi with the digital age and with the proliferation of many media platforms na, naging um, uh, egalitarian so to speak yung historical practice no uh, pero may negative effect yan ano pag sasabing ah hindi na makailangan pala yung mga historia no uh, pwede na ako no ako ang mas nakakaalam no? kahit wala akong training ako yung makakapagsasabi yung sinasabi ni Sergio kanina na the untold story uh, narrative no uh, may mga clickbait yan na uh, hindi naman practicing historian so they were not trained to apply the scientific method pero siya sabi nila ito yung kasaysayan so that's the the negative uh, dimension of this no positively nagkaroon din ng access no uh, yung maraming mga tao at yung spread nito no uh, uh, to a more audience kasi ngayon uh, with uh, free online sources you can publish uh and uh, make your ideas more known no? uh, so hindi lang yung access to sources but the spread of historical interpretation uh, done by uh, legitimate historians but on the flip side may negative din ito no um kuminsan uh, uh, yung access uh, uh, particularly popular access hindi na nagdi-discern alin ba yung legit at alin yung hindi no so if, especially now with the challenges of online learning uh, sasabihan lang natin yung mga estudyante o sige mag-research kayo about this topic napupuntahan nila yung TikTok at YouTube no? at hindi hindi discerning ano ba yung tamang pamamaraan para malaman ito no? uh, ilang negative aspects of of the digital revolution uh, I, I think yung sinasabi ni Sir Gio no yung process of review uh, which is a tedious uh, process uh, uh, adopted by the historians and generally the entire community, uh, scientific and academic community. Alamin yung sources, magbebet yung sources, reliable ba ito, authentic ba ito, verifiable ba ito. And then, given uh, uh, the sources, how do we establish the facts from these sources? And how do we then um, uh, put forward a, an interpretation that's logical? Um, as a narrative to tease uh, all, all of these uh, different facts no, together. Uh, wala rin process nung pag-review nung spurious sources o kung minsan may mga platforms na wala namang source no, na sinasabi. Uh, so the digital uh, revolution also provided for possibilities, actually immense possibilities, na hindi natin na-realize in the past na nag-celebratory uh, tayo na yay, may egalitarian, democratized access tayo. But um, the internet also became sites of half-truths, of historical denials, lies, conspiracies, conspiracy theories and distortions. No? Yung examples nito na ibigay na uh, ni Gio kanina. And the idea of uh, uh, these supposed uh, historical sites uh, with spurious sources uh, be, becoming a platform for the political agenda in um, imagination of some. No? Hindi naman sikreto halimbawa yung uh, sinabi nung Cambridge Analytica that the, they, lalo na yung mga whistleblowers about this, no? that um, uh, they also became um, an instrument to the proliferation of um, twisted or unscientific, non-academic, non-reviewed uh, interpretations uh, to serve the political agenda of, of some. No? Now, the nature of counterfactual. Sometimes it's an exercise for students of history and uh, the general uh, population. Yung, what could have happened if? No? Ako, tinatanong ko rin kuminsan yung mga studyante ko, what if hindi na, namatay uh, si Andres Bonifacio? at siya yung naging tagapag uh, uh, patuloy talaga ng himagsikan at kumaharap sa mga Amerikano. What would have happened if halimbawa uh, um, uh, 
nanalo si Claro M. Recto doon sa pangluhan, no? doon sa halalan uh, noong 1950s. What if uh, hindi na assassinate si Benigno Aquino noong 1983? These were exercises to uh, show to our students yung possibilities of historical interpretations. Counterfactual ito kasi hindi naman talaga nangyari. Pero yung uh, narratives of counterfactual should also be based on you know uh, what could have happened if given the facts that we know. Diba? So it's an exercise to test the logic of historical interpretation. Pero sometimes yung counterfactual as were actually uh, being promoted as alternative uh, narratives no? or al alternative facts. No? Actually, uh, non-facts or non-truths no? uh, yung binabanggit dito. Yung binanggit kanina halimbawa yung uh, si Father Jose Antonio Diaz. In some uh, Facebook post, si, ang picture naman ni Gregorio Aglipay yung naka, nakalagay. No? Pero si Rizal daw ito na nakasurvive at nabuhay at naging isa sa dalawang pinakamayamang tao sa buong daigdig noong 1949. Ang ikalawa si Marcos. So, so counterfactual ito kasi um, hindi siya, oh, negative counterfactual ito kasi hindi siya nagpapakita ng anumang batayang uh, factual basis. No? Okay. Um, according to Galgano, and and Heiser doing history research and writing in the digital age uh, despite the fact na may may uh, seeming absence of the review process in the way people upload supposed historical narratives or historical studies pwede pa rin naman as uh, recipients of these platforms no, or audience of these uh, social media sites we can still test and review digital historical sources no um, and and perhaps these are very important uh, because uh, this may be a, a way uh, for us to tell na kung legit ba o hindi no who is the author no kuminsan dun sa pangalan pa lang one one uh, review that i mentioned uh, i i did no uh, about the taliano gold may nag-cite siya ng source no? uh, na nagsabi, ah, ito, it's verified, no? uh, published in this journal. Uh, yun pala, sila rin yung nag-create ng journal and the author was uh, named Lika Mahar. No? Parang binaligtad na Mahar Lika. So sila, sila rin yun. What is the purpose and the expertise of the author? No? Hindi naman ibig sabihin digital source, i-dismiss naman natin agad. No? Uh, we should always be critical in, in dealing with this. No? Uh, most of the digital sources are uh, secondary sources, of course. Um, uh, digital platforms in social media, I mean, are, are secondary sources. Uh, but when we read secondary sources, mamaya i-differentiate natin what's primary and secondary. Based ba sila sa primary archival sources? Nagdaan ba sila doon sa process of uh, examining the sources for them to be able to establish historical facts? And how did they read uh, the past? And how uh, do we as uh, members of the digital audience read these uh, um, historical sites? No? So kailangan ng critical reading na sabi. Lalo na kung parang spurious or uh, ridiculous na yung ibang claims. No? Hindi na tatanggapin ka agad-agad. Kailangan laging magtatanong, totoo ba? Sino ang gumawa nito? Ano ang layunin? Ano ang kasa, ka, kasanayan? No? Ano ang kakayahan? No? Ano yung mga conclusions? And then finally, ano yung agenda nila for this? No? Bakit nag-proliferate? No? Kuminsan parang nababahala tayo. Or they have several million followers no? with several million views. No? Pero baka naman yung iba dito hindi totoong tao. Diba? Baka naman yung iba dito eh, sila sila rin lang with 50 accounts per individual na reshare and review lamang lahat ng mga ito. So how do we then look at the, the development of these in the advent of you know the challenges that we face as a nation um, 
and uh, the development of uh, or the lack if thereof unfortunately of national consciousness in historical memory no? napakamahalaga kasi kung grounded sa nationalism yung philippine historiography but at the same time uh, nationalism that's true, that uh, uh, that's based on a certain footing no ito yung sinasabi nating partisan scholarship uh, kasi sasabihin oh uh, itong mga sites naman na uh, Taliano Gold uh, Marcos uh, Marshall of Golden Age or the Philippines was the the most industrialized country in Asia during that time sabi nila kami yung makabayan pero tatanungin natin yung pagiging makabayan ba uh, an, uh, ano yung batayan ano ito ba ay nakabatay sa katotohanan sa kasaysayan o nakabatay ba ito dun sa paglilihis sa katotohanan kasi kung hindi na nakabatay ito sa katotohanan at nasa lihis na ito wala nang batayang ang uh, patotoo doon sa sinasabi hindi ito yung dapat na magiging batayan ng pagkamakabayan especially um, kung yung agenda yung uh, with political and historical dimensions of uh, developing identity and, and consciousness uh, that's progressive and nationalist versus uh, shall we say um, um, an identity and consciousness that's based on lies of on how half half truths or conspiracy theories were being peddled so laging nagiging tagisan yung uh, historiography therefore uh, in, in in this particular line you know? Uh, between global and local. No? Uh, how do we establish ourselves as part of a global community at the same time recognizing uh, the localities that we are operating on uh, based on gender, class, ethnicity, and nation. No? Um, at the same time, pwede rin natin sabihin, eh, ito nga, no? sabi nila, uh, uh, si Julian Taliano was uh, the emperor, no? uh, a royal family member of the Maharlika Kingdom. Uh, spurious naman, anong dimension of national consciousness yung pinapedal dito? It may be global and local, pero it's based on lies and, and uh, distortions. Hindi yun yung dapat na maging basis. Because the nature of our work encompasses, and I think this is one of the major realizations that Tanggol Kasaysayan and Abakada have had in the past seven, two years, no, lalo na. But it uh, was already felt when Tanggol Kasaysayan was established around seven years ago. We are public historians uh, operating both in the physical and in the digital realm. The public monuments that we have had in the past uh, are being reimagined. No? Hindi lang ito yung physical na monumento, kundi yung monument in the consciousness of the people. Kaya napaka-controversial uh, noong paglilibing sa libingan ng mga bayani, hindi lang mang dahil doon sa physical na inilagay yung wax figure uh, ni Marcos do, dito, kung hindi ano yung uh, uh, dimensyong pang kamalayan nitong monumentong ito. And as public intellectuals, we are duty-bound uh, to uh, have uh, our say uh, to the public um, and advance uh, more scientific, more truthful, uh, more academic method in, in historical studies. No? And then how do we analyze this? No? Ito yung laging sinasabi, kailangan may discernment. Ano yung primary at secondary sources? Ano yung batayan niya? Um, paano niya nakuha yung information na ito? No? Uh, may primary sources ba siya? Ibig sabihin, yung primary source yung talagang naitala, naisulat, naidokumento nung mga nakasaksi, uh, kalahok sa mga pangyayari at uh, kakontemporaryo ng mga pangyayari. Kung wala tayong makitang primary source, then pagdududahan na natin kaagad yung sinasabi. Secondary sources naman, lahat ng mga nasulat na gumamit ng primary at iba pang secondary sources, gaya halimbawa ng mga textbooks, ng mga journal articles, ng mga uh, history books. No? Uh, ganun din, uh, ano ang batayan ng pagsusulat o produksyon halimbawa sa digital media 
ng mga ito kung susundin at kikilalanin yung uh, pamantayang historical. No? Uh, gumamit ba siya ng tamang primary sources? Gumamit ba siya ng tamang secondary sources? Um, kaya nga sabi yung mga historian daw, pag nagbabasa, una niyang tinitignan yung dulo, no? nasaan yung bibliography. Kasi that will uh, sort of um, exhibit already, reveal already, ano yung batayan. No? But beyond that kasi, hindi lang yung use of sources, kundi yung interpretation of these sources, no? interpretation of these facts. So uh, these are also essential and necessary in subjecting the material uh, in history. No? Uh, historians usually establish uh, uh, factual evidence by looking at their sources and critically examining them. By addressing two major problems. No? Number one, the problem of authenticity or external criticism. No? Nasaan ba galing yung mga documents na sinabi niya? Tato totoo ba ito? No? Uh, meron ba siyang binabanggit na mga documents or variants of these documents? May mga handwriting and signature or seal no? or pictures even. Di ba? Yun nga eh. Um, ang daming pagbabanggit kay Julian Taliano. Kung talagang prominente siya, wala bang uh, painting man lamang o larawan o ano man na nagpakita o si si Jose Antonio Diaz no uh, ang pinapakita ay larawan ni Gregorio Aglipa so authenticity or external criticism ano yung physical uh, manifestation ng source na makikita natin kung wala yan hindi ma-establish yung authenticity niyan second Problem of credibility or, in, or internal criticism. Ano ba yung details ng testimony? Who corroborated? Were there other corroborations? Baka naman sila, sila rin yung nagsasite ng kanika nilang mga ginagawa. Na wala sa archives, wala sa memoirs, wala sa diaries ng ibang mga tao, wala sa ibang mga sinulat ng ibang historians. Hindi makorroborate. So ibig sabihin, invention lang o imagination. Uh, sino ba yung author? No, nasaan yung mga sites and locations na binabanggit? At uh, tignan natin, halimbawa, si Julian Taliano ay may dugong Scot Scottish daw at uh, member of the royal family na nakapangasawa ng Maharlika, na heir ng Maharlika Kingdom. Bakit wala sa genealogy nito? No? Uh, yung determination or of approximate date, no? may may uh, uh, agreement daw yung Maharlika Kingdom and the Vatican regarding the gold. No? If we go to the Vatican archives, meron bang ganong list of agreements? No? Especially may binabanggit sila na uh, during the time of Pope Pius. No? So tignan natin no? sa Vatican archives, ano yung documents uh, revealing the uh, uh, treaties or agreements signed into by the Vatican under Pope Pius at may makikita ba tayo dyan? Ano yung functional or occupational credibility ng mga ito? Diba? Uh, yun nga, yung ibang mga sites, hindi natin ma-determine totoo bang mga tao yung mga authors nito. O baka nagbabanggit lamang na mga inventong mga tao, yung supposed historian, hindi naman pala totoo. Tapos pinapatun pinapatunayan nilang totoo by stating all of these uh, wild and uh, ridiculous claims about the past. No? So, yung problem of credibility and authenticity should be first and foremost in critical reading and evaluation of sources. Verification. No? How do we collate some other texts, witnesses, or other sources of facts? No? Halimbawa, yung sinabing, ah, when the gold was turned over, nandito naman, witness si Lorenzo Taniada. No, at uh, si Manuel Rojas daw yung tumanggap. Tignan natin yung Rojas papers o yung Tanyada papers. No? May mga texts or witnesses ba to corroborate? Or uh, baka naman easily ma madaling madedetect yung error, bias, rumor, forgery, or myths dito. We should ascertain sino yung author, ano yung date, consistency, and probability of these things happening. No, yung si Jose Rizal na naka-survive o yung uh, uh, 
naging pinakamayamang bada, uh, tao ang, ang mga gaya ni na Jose Antonio Diaz at Marcos. Dahil bigla na lang ibibigay ng Maharlika Kingdom mula sa lahat ng mga gintong nakuha niya sa Yamashita, sa uh, Srivijaya at Majapahit Empire pa. No? Yan yung sinasabi. Um, yung consistency and probability of these things happening. Paano ba magaganap o naganap ba talaga ang mga ito? Um, we should also be in the lookout, hindi ko na idedetalye ito, no? the way how narration, description, interpretation, and persuasions were being put forward by these uh, uh, spurious uh, sites. No? At para rin makita natin how narration, description, interpretation, and persuasion are essential types of historical interpretation in legitimate historical sites naman. Pag may basis yung, yung factual narrative based on authentic, credible, and validated source, pa paano naman yung pagpapaliwanag nito? No? Uh, so yan. So laging magkakambal yung um, uh, explanation and uh, arrival of uh, historical facts through the use of proper sources. Kung wala yung dalawang ito, kailangan na nating pagdudahan yung mga sources. No? Um, it may also be based on causation, some determinism, um, generalizations. Uh, limawa, generalizations made by historians, nagdaan niya, no? um, hindi naman ngayon lang nagkaroon ng practicing historian. Bakit parang tila ngayon lang sumulpot yung ganitong mga interpretations, so magdududa na tayo. Parang... Uh, if it's a counter narrative then it's a counter narrative to a particular discourse pero saan pinaghuhugutan ito no baka walang genealogy parang uh, bulang biglang sumulpot na lamang ang, ang ilang mga generalizations dapat pagdududahan kaagad natin ang mga ito uh, especially doon sa uh, explanation based on causation no? how do they how how did they interpret uh, the events based on the sequencing, sequencing of the events, what caused the things to happen the way it happened. The events as effects to other events. No? Baka uh, iba yung pinapaliwanag at walang batayan, uh, imahinasyon lang, tapos sinasabing ito yung naging dahilan. Kaya ganyan. Right now, it's not only uh, a narrative that puts forward the golden age of, of uh, the Marcoses, no? but also a counter-narrative to the Edsa narrative. No? Uh, at alam na rin, naman natin no? uh, kung paano ito uh, uh, nagbibigay din nung uh, misinterpretation and distortion. No? Uh, some people, uh, some historical figures were totally demonized no may pag-aaral nga no ano yung impact doon sa ibang historical figures no totally negative yung projection or totally positive no uh, dito other considerations how did they periodize no both internal and external no and uh, how did they um interpret uh, the viability and possibilities of chance and historical accidents. No? Medyo nagkukulang na ako sa oras, pero ang mahalaga dito, uh, the, the narrative should be subjected to historical reviews. No? Um, ito medyo academic, pero I mean, we cannot do without this. No? How, how did they summarize uh, their, their, their findings? What, what were the approaches, methodologies, and the frameworks? No, lagi kung sinasabi, uh, ano yung sources nila? No, uh, para kanino yung audience? No, to sway public opinion utilizing historical narratives. No, uh, so considerations of who is the author, who is the audience for this work? When was this produced, written? Actually, yung isang ginagawa namin sa abakada ni na Professor Giang, no. To date, no, kailan na po tap itong mga um, spurious historical sites na ito. No? So it, it, it may appear as if talagang may organized, systematic way of distorting the past kasi bigla-bigla nagsulputan no? and utilizing the platform in digital media. At ngayon, even uh, our uh, colleagues from mass communication were already... Uh, 
advancing these uh, uh, findings. No? Uh, the May connection with some institutions of government, with some uh, political families, it's a production no? and public display of this. No? Particularly if we look at the attribution and citation, at ngayon sa digital media, if we trace uh, the production, not only to those who uploaded it, but also to those who produce these materials. No? So finally, ano yung last part, mabadaliin ko na lang. Uh, there is a, a, a great uh, challenge for us uh, in the realm of historical distortion and negative historical revisionism uh, and the role of digital media uh, should be recognized in advancing scientific, factual, and proper historical consciousness. Uh, na, uh, alito, um, challenge of story, negative historical revisionism have had many, many examples na ipakita na kanina ni Professor Diang. So the challenge for us is to utilize the same platform to advance no, factual, scientific uh, interpretations uh, to history, to advance proper factual uh, forms of historical consciousness. Uh, and we should always be on the lookout for this. No? Falsification of historical facts. Uh, yung pagsasabi na ganito ang halaga ng piso kontra dolyar nung panahon ni, ni Marcos. Ganito yung uh, unemployment rate. We can always look Look at uh, even government data of that time. Ginagawa ito ng ibon to uh, fact check. No? Whitewashing. Pag sinasabing, eh, uh, ang dami namang uh, ginawa no? um, ng Pamilya Marcos sa Limbawang uh, proyektong pang-infrastruktura. So okay lang na medyo may kurakot, may nakawan. No? Uh, basta... May cultural center naman tayo, may heart center naman. Uh, or pag whitewash na, ah, kasi uh, kaya nagka-marshal o umayos naman yung buhay natin. Wala nang mga tambay, wala nang magugulo sa mga kanto. Or uh, as I mentioned, the example of a counter-narrative na kinidnap si Marcos ng CIA o uh, si Cory Aquino yung dahilan kaya bumagsak ang ekonomiya ng Pilipinas at nalubog tayo sa utang at maraming pang iba. Pinatigil ang Bataan Nuclear Power Plant dahil ayaw niyang makilala si Marcos at sa kanyang mga nagawa. Or denialism. Ang liit-liit ko pa naman yan, hindi ko alam na may martial law at anong karahasan. O kaya uh, wala namang human rights violation no, na nagaganap. Denial or trivialized. No? Eh, yan namang mga nakulong na patay, mga ano yan, mga pasaway, uh, mga manggugulo, no? mga terorista nga parang parang recently no, parang uh, may isang uh, public information officer pa naman na nagsabi, eh I, I will not cry for this terrorist no, pero paano kung volunteer teacher pala siya for a lumad community, no? So na trivialize yung yung papel mahalagang papel ng ilang mga tao sa kasaysayan. At yung kahalagahan ng propaganda narrative sa, tele sa electoral campaign at uh, recognition information and troll corporations. Marami tayong legitimate online, online, online sites no, that we can access and utilize. No, digital university libraries, digital libraries even uh, of government, no, digital archives, Institutional sites, no? uh, even uh, government sites like uh, NEDA, Central Bank, may mga historical accounts naman and archival uh, documents tayo makukuha dyan. Pero mahalaga yung uh, ikaapat, no? digital historical memory projects. Marami yan at pwede nating tignan sa pagtulong ng, um, ng uh, uh, makabayan progresibo scientific kong kasaysayan ay ang tibong bayan libingan ng mga bayani Marshall Museum self promotion na yung abakada and tanggol kasaysayan even check check that ph is also dealing with some of these uh, fact checking uh, initiatives 
uh, in history. So lagi laging tinatanong para kanino at tungo saan ang kasaysayan ano? At para kanino at tungo saan ang pag-aaral natin ng kasaysayan. Ito yung suma total eh. Ito ba ay para sa pagpapatatag ng kapangyarihan ng mga oligarko o pagpapanumbalik na sa poder ng uh, isinuka na ng bayan o para ba ito sa paglilinaw ng kamalayan ng nakararami? Pagbibigay ba ito ng kadiliman sa pag-unawa at kamalayan o pagbibigay ito ng liwanag? So yan. So maraming salamat at uh, ito yung pwede nating banggitin uh, na pamamaraan, metodolohiya sa pag-aaral ng kasaysayan. Yan. Ipopromote ko lang may YouTube channel na ang tanggol kasaysayan at abakada. Baka pwede rin nating uh, panoorin. So yun lamang po. Maraming salamat at uh, magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Yeah, thank you so much um Dr. Gialogo for that very insightful talk no and um telling us and teaching us to have those what ifs at um talagang titignan ko ano yung narrative sa mga um content and at platform that will be faced to us lalo na ngayon na palagi nating binabanggit that we are leading up to the fall. So at this moment, we are opening the floor for a Q&A portion. Kung gusto niyo magtanong sa ating mga panelists, it is open. You may key in your questions sa chat box or um, pwede ding raise hand feature ng Zoom so that I can call you and you may um, ask your questions to our panelists. Meron po ba tayong mga tanong? Uh, have, maybe they're still thinking about it. We have a question um, from the live stream sa YouTube. Um, he is his yung name niya, her pala, Rowena Ligid. Um, and the question is, is there a standardized test Standardized test that assesses the fact-checking skills of, for instance, students? If yes, where can we find it? If no, what does it take to develop it? Maybe both can give their insights on the question. Gio, ikaw na. <laughs> standardized test. Kasi di ba nasa ano yan, pag tinuturo sa high school, yung research methods, how do you um, how do you find a source, a credible source, how do you write a research paper? And sa, not really on sources, pero no, at least sa experience ko sa basic education, yun ang tinuturo, how to conduct proper research. Nung nag-history major na ako, doon ako na-expose doon sa talagang scrutiny ano yung primary source ano yung secondary source how you, how do you scrutinize primary sources determine the veracity of a source what is opinion from fact no um pero kasi naka-program yun for history majors no um i think ito yung dapat rin palakasin sa i'm coming from my experience and hindi ako familiar sa curriculum ng K12 na yun. <laughs> kasi nanggaling ako doon sa old curriculum din eh um, kung meron ng ganito sa junior or senior high, pero kailangan palakasin yung critical examination of um, online sources, mga ganon. Um, it's development of skills. Mas skills development talaga eh pagdating sa research methodology. Um, I think from what I've, I've been hearing from my students sa uh, mga junior high, tinuturoan naman sila ng research methodology. So talaga magagamit yun. Test... Um, wala naman standard test pero um, may curriculum for that ano ba yun ang pwede kong masagot doon sa tanong na yun siguro um, kung iugnay ko lang yung binanggit ni Gion um, parang question everything no? even legitimate uh, sources should be uh, questioned in terms of its authenticity veracity ganyan na hindi lang tanggap ng tanggap no at yun yung basis din nung binabanggit ni uh, Professor Giang na ideya ng critical thinking and critical research. No? Hindi ibig sabihin na nakita na sa YouTube o sa TikTok parang biblical truth na agad natatanggapin, hook, line, and sinker. No? Or even nakita na sa archives. No? Um, kasi nga, e uh, even in some of the legitimate 
historic history sites, may mga pumapasok pa rin na denialize malimbawa. May isang hindi ko nababanggitin ng pangalan, pero may isang dating very legitimate uh, site in Philippine history na originally nag upload lang ano yung mga sources no accounts ng mga Spanish conquistadors, accounts ng mga uh, participants in social movements. But eventually, parang ang napuna ko ngayon, what they are now uploading were pro-Marcos, uh, either historical distortion or historical denialism materials. So parang na-transform yung ibang sites from legit historical uh, sites Uh, to access digitally um, enhanced materials uh, necessary for historical research. Ngayon, na-transform siya into sites for um, Marcos apologists. No? Uh, at flooded no? ang dami-daming disinformation and uh, non-factual claims. So kailangan talaga uh, maging mapanuri at maging critical. Yun, yun lang naman yung unang hakbang sa pagsusuri. Yun, maging mapanuri at maging critical. And we have to question everything. May tanong pa po tayo from the live stream. Have Abacadas fact checks and other efforts to push back against historical distortions, especially about the Marcoses made a dent? What challenges are you up against in convincing the public? What are the historical truths? <laughs> has it made that? <laughs> Sir Francis, has it made that? <laughs> well, sabi nga nila, kapag uh, inaatake ka na ng mga troll, yun na yung, yun na yung pamantayan ngayon na, ah, na pinupuna ka na nila dahil uh, you are create, uh, creating some credible content. And challenging their uh, hmm. I mean their yun, yun, yun ata so yun yung, yung isa oh yun yung isa naming pamantay parang badge of honor na pag na-troll kang <laughs> na-troll may mga ano um, na-disable yung gmail namin mga ganyan <laughs> mga online attacks um, ang daming ano ang daming engagements may may statistics buti yung Facebook may statistics na yung yung sa page pag admin ka may kita mo yung engagements paano sa lumanding and what not and may kita mo din sa mga nag um, may message eh, kasi Facebook page lang yung ano namin main ano ng abakada eh, main platform Mar- dumami starting February na launch ang abakada uh, November November And then December kami nagsimula ng fact checks. Um, starting Feb, mid-February, dumami yung mga messages from un, from random netizens nang po-forward ng mga paki-fact check naman po to, ganun. So I think I think nakaka-capture siya ng ng ano ng traction from the netizens based on those ano a very uh, a small sample of ano lang of 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 um, engagements na natatanggap ng Facebook page pati mga emails maraming pumapasok na mga nagre-recommend na paki fact check ito aside from the hostile comments <laughs> maraming mga hostile comments and mga shares minsan nakikita namin sinishare siya sa mga DDS groups mga ganon nakikita mo eh kung saan sinishare um yun yun yung ano yun yung ilan sa mga tinitingnan namin sa hindi lang siguro sa uh, abahada no kasi yung halos lahat ng miyembro ng Tanggol Kasaysayan ay kasama rin sa abahada. Ang Tanggol Kasaysayan kasi has been in existence uh, longer no? At doon nakita namin parang may seasonality rin eh. Pag malapit na yung ed sa commemoration, biglang tataas yung views o yung shares. Uh, tapos September na naman ganyan. Yan, araw ng kalayaan, feel a war, may ganyan. Uh, pero ang nakakatuwa din dito, napanggit din ito ni uh, uh, Professor Giang, no? yung uh, reach nito, makikita mo rin dun sa profile ng mga tao. No? Ang dami dito mga academics, some students, no? uh, na nakikita na worthwhile at ito yung uh, may halaga sa 
pag-aaral ng mga material pang kasaysayan. Na dati, uh, hindi. No? Um, kuminsan nga may ilan na uh, originally alam mo na Marcos Apologists and then later on no, uh, na, na paliwanagan. Yun lang naman. So kahit paunti-unti maliitan uh, ilang hakbang um, hakbangin ito sa mas maganda ring pagpapalawak ng kamalayan. Ayan. Kahit si Check That PH, pinapasok na din ng mga tolls, lalo na sa mga videos na pinaproduce on ano, historical distortion. Anyway, may last question tayo sa chat box from Mr. Ram- Romel Lopez. He asks, Is there an aggregator site of historical websites or social media pages of universities or history societies where journalists and even ordinary citizens could also access to fact-check claims? Hmm. Yan ang isang mahirap kasi kalat-kalat sa ngayon. Um, maganda yung initiatives ng mga netizens na di ba may kumakalat na parang Google Drive na maraming sources. Y- yun, pwede magamit na sources about let's say martial law, for example, martial law history, um, kung particular doon yung pagpa-fact check. And... Um, Kalat-kalat sa ngayon eh. Kalat-kalat talaga. Um, yan ang isang kailangan gawin kasi yan din, I, at least for me from what I've observed, um, kailangan yung public history ay naka-direct siguro sa ganito pagko-consolidate ng, ng mga efforts ng iba't ibang organizations to fact-check historical distortions para may go-to uh, platform ang ordinary netizens natin and mga journalists natin na pag history ah, ito yung ikukon i ano nila i kukonsultahing website sa ngayon ta- pagkalat-kalat sa na-observe ko hindi siya centralized meron ka tanggol kasi sa yan for example di ba lagi nating ginagawa yung yung hindi lang naman pagfa-fact check eh uh, maraming events um, webinars recently na patungkol sa history um So yun, uh, abakada and then tanggol ka sa isa. Abakada kasi mas broad eh. Hindi lang naman history yung tinitingnan niya. So, in, it's decentralized. O nga. I, I think parang um, isang malaking proyekto ito. No? And uh, I think the, the way to do this is really uh, to project ourselves even beyond May 2022. Parang ang nakikinita natin nga, ito napakalaki ng pangailangan ng paglilinaw uh, sa kasalukuyang panahon. Pero uh, baka mas malaki pa rin yung uh, inihiling sa atin bilang pamayanan ng mga historiador, akademiko, mamamahayag after May 2022. No, parang hindi dito dapat magtatapos at lalong dapat tayong magkaroon ng coordinative effort para sa paglilinaw ng mga ganitong bagay. Initially by by looking at this, no parang yun nga yung isang napag-usapan, uh, mag-provide lang ng mga links, no? At ma-systematize na saan ang mga ito paano makikita. At yung mga links na parang uh, red flag uh, links, no? Um, na kailangan mapagbantay pag ito yung kumakala. No? Yun and He also commented, si Sir Romel, that there is a site developed by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies called SRP-P or SERP-P, SERP-P, where full articles of abstracts of economic and development studies are uploaded for easy access. Mm-hmm. Maybe the historical yeah, societies and academics can consider this. Um, yeah. Meron so, ding ilang websites. Ito, pakita natin yung... Well, particular sa Marshall, for example, ito Ateneo to, sir, di ba? Etong Marshall Museum. Oo, oo. I think this is Ateneo. May mga sources diyan eh. Etong Digital Library. Maganda yung mga digital library teaching resources and what not. Na pwedeng tingnan ng mga journalists and netizens for the purpose of fact checking. Minsan kasi ang tanong sa amin, bakit puro si Marcos Marcos na lang? Eh kasi siya yung pinakamadami sa ano eh. Ang dami talaga ever since 2016 tungkol sa Marcos Fantasy, Marcos Revisionism online. so And then meron pa isa um, ni Launch. Well, this is in response doon sa pagpasok ng NTFL CAC sa mga libraries. 
Uh, pero meron ditong reading list. Free download ng lahat ng mga libro. May martial law. Ito, martial law literature. Ayan. Lahat ng mga ng mga ano may CIA reports pa nga oh. So, pwedeng bisitahin eto mga website nito Aswang sa Aklata. November 1, 2021 to na launch eh. Yan, ilan sa mga useful uh, uh, online references. Siguro Professor Gian can drop the links in our chat box para okay. ma-access na natin. Meron din daw po sa HRVVMC, tama po 'yun, sa Human Rights Violation. Pantayog ng mga bayani, uh, digitized yung kanilang archives. Yun, marami pala tayong mga um, depositories no, ng mga fact checks and information na pwede natin ipanangga sa historical distortion. Meron po ba ba tayong mga tanong? May gusto po bang tanong? Last chance na po bago natin i-let go ang ating mga speaker. Very um, Great discussion and fruitful discussion this morning. Ayun. Thank you for the links, um, Professor Giang. Nakita na po namin. Kung wala na po tayong mga tanong, let's proceed to our photo of um, quick lang memorabilia. Um, bukas po tayo ng mga cam so we can see each other. Siguro maybe wave and we'll take a quick photo of before we 